Hey friends, Pastor Bill Walden here with Build Up the Church. God bless you. I hope you're doing super great. I hope that you're enjoying life with Jesus. This is a devotional word for August 18th, 2024, out of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We want to remember the setting uh, that Paul is uh, writing to, the church that he's writing to, the setting that they live in. The city of Corinth was known as a great business center, a, uh, a great place of commerce, a great place of philosophy and debate, a great place of immorality. One of the things that the Corinthians really enjoyed and highly valued was great oratory. <clears throat> they loved to debate, they loved to philosophize, they loved to share different ideas. Um, the Apostle Paul talks about this, about men that are always learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. That seems to describe um, the mentality of the people of Corinth. They love to speak and they love to debate and they love to compare ideas and they love to think lofty things and what if this and what if that, and, uh, but they really valued uh, great speakers. The Apostle Paul determined when he went to Corinth that he would not try to compete with them uh, in order to bring the gospel. He wasn't going to try to play their game. He wasn't going to try to um, be in competition with them in regards to speaking style. He said this about himself. He says, Brethren, when I came to you, I did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. When he uses that word testimony there, it talks about somebody that's giving uh, a testimony to what they've seen and heard. That's what a witness does. They give testimony about what they've seen and heard and what they know. So the Apostle Paul says this, When I came to you, I did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. I didn't try to impress your human nature. I didn't try to wow you with uh, my great speaking skills. I didn't try to make it so lofty so that it was very intriguing to your soulish mentality. I wasn't trying to impress you that way. I wasn't trying to impress you into the kingdom of God. Paul had a great mind, and Paul was a great debater, and he was a great speaker, and he could have uh, certainly kept up with uh, the best speakers there in Corinth, but he chose not to. There's an old saying in Christianity and in church ministry regarding people. When you want to invite people into the church, it says this, what you draw them with is what you draw them to. There are some churches that draw people into the church by great, exciting events, spectacular events that are very entertaining and very uh, moving to the soul and very um, kind of takes your breath away kind of thing. But if you're drawing people to church with that kind of activity, then that's what they're going to want to see. You have to maintain that kind of activity. Paul said, I'm not going to draw anybody into the kingdom of God with what he called excellence of speech or of wisdom. Paul is not promoting being a bad speaker, and he's not against wisdom. But he's saying, I'm not going to dilute the gospel. I'm not going to minimize the gospel. I'm not going to water down the gospel by trying to be flattering to you and flowery in my speech and entertaining he said this in verse 2, For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. My message was on point all of the time with you. Mankind has sinned, and, our, and mankind is under the judgment of God, but God loves humanity and sent Jesus Christ to be a substitute for them, to be the one that would take their place in um, experiencing the punishment of God. And so Jesus was that great uh, substitute for us. Paul says, I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I didn't get off into tangents. I didn't preach moral behavior. 
I didn't preach a cultural awareness, not that any of those things are bad, but those things water down the gospel. And so he said, I kept on point with Jesus Christ and him crucified. Verse three, I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. The apostle Paul had his reasons for being uh, weak and, and fearful there in Corinth, and those are speculated on. Point being was, Paul was not full of himself, and he wasn't strutting around with a prideful attitude. He's like, I, I'm going to keep the message simple. I'm not going to try to entertain you. I'm not going to try to wow you. I'm not going to try to get you into the kingdom by uh, emotional manipulation. I'm just going to tell you about Jesus. Verse 4, And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. It seems to me today that there are many who really want to impress people, and they do impress people, with persuasive words of human wisdom, clever sayings, clever phrases. I'm not against good speaking. I think every preacher, every pastor, every Bible teacher should be a good speaker to the best of their ability. The point is this. You can focus on impressing people with persuasive words of human wisdom to, to think that you can talk them into the kingdom of God. But it has well been said, if you can talk someone into the kingdom of God, somebody else can talk them out. So the Apostle Paul said, I'm not going to play that game. I'm not going to use those methods that everybody in Corinth values so highly. I'm going to be straight ahead with you. I'm going to be simple. I'm going to be clear. I'm going to be blunt. Um, my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Paul says this, when I spoke, there wasn't any human wonderfulness to it. It was a demonstration of the Spirit of God and the power of God. And preaching ought to be that way. A demonstration of God's Spirit and a demonstration and a, and a manifestation of God's power. The simple gospel message spoken strongly and clearly. Paul said, I did this, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. The gospel has the power to save. The gospel message explains the fallen state of man and God's plan for redemption and salvation. If you're a pastor and a teacher, don't add to it. Stay, stay on point. Stay on target. If you're a Christian, guard yourself from worldly entertainment in the church. In my view, there is a lot of uh, soulish manipulation going on in many churches around the world, and people are falling for it because it's easy to fall for it. There are some pastor teachers that are very entertaining. They're very uh, pleasing in their appearance, and they know how to work a crowd. Paul said, I'll have none of that because if that's what you're drawing people with, that's what you're drawing people to. Paul said, I'd rather draw people with the simple gospel message and draw them to Jesus. So some things to think about. Thanks for watching.